Very good morning, brothers and sisters, from wherever you are at home. I just want to encourage us today to join us together in worship. The joy of worship, the love of worship to a God who loves us more than you ever know. The first song we're singing is Who You Say I Am. Yes, I am. 
In my father's house, there's a place for me. Now I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Oh, the sun says. a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I hope that you really, really enjoyed worship so far. The next song we're singing is, Oh, I Need Your Love. Oh 
Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Good morning, church. My name is Garrison from the Polite Ministry, and it is my pleasure to be here today to lead us in the word of prayer. So without further ado, let's pray. Dear Father God, thank you so much for bringing all of us here today to attend service together. It really is a privilege for all of us to attend the service online during this pandemic. And it really shows that you will always provide a way for us to see you, no matter what happens in life. God, I just want to pray for those of us who are facing difficulties, that may we attribute it to you and find strength from it. For it is during our moment of weakness that we grow stronger spiritually. Help us to be surrendered and always seek you with all our hearts. God, I also want to pray for our brothers and sisters in India who have been hit by the virus. Really be with them wherever they are and help them to find strength in you. May we also be more surrendered towards you, God, and be more intentional with our spiritual identity during this lockdown as well. Help us to really find time and just foster our relationships so that we may be able to spur one another on during tougher times. As we move on with the months ahead, God, reveal to us how we may have drifted away from you, God, and help us to be humble and loving and take every opportunity to draw closer to you again. For those who have been hurt by the church, God, I just want to pray that you really make use of any of us to reach out and make amends, helping us to reconnect with one another and continue fostering our community. Do remind us of our mistakes, God, so that we may be always able to learn from it. Lord, I also want to ask of you to continue to give us more opportunities to serve as well so that we may be able to grow spiritually and call others higher. Lastly, God, I just want to pray that you open up our hearts, Lord, to the sermon later and take something away from it that we can practice in our daily lives. May you give Sean strength and speak through him, God, so that we will be able to truly understand how you want us to grow. We surrender ourselves and trust everything onto your hands, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ronnie, and uh, it's my privilege to uh, share the communion message with you this morning. Communion is a time that we want to remember our Lord Jesus Christ, for he has gone to the cross 2,000 years ago. To many people, the cross at the time represents capital punishment, suffering, death, and, and blood. But to our Lord Jesus, it means forgiveness a new hope, a new life, and a new destiny. The communion scripture is taken from Luke 23, chapter 23, verse 29 to 43. Here it says, One of the criminals who hung there heard insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This passage talks about the final moments when Jesus was on the cross and his, and his interaction with the criminal who was hung side by side with him. Jesus did no wrong. He was without sin. But the criminal was justly punished for a crime he has committed. Okay, I consider this uh, criminal the most fortunate person ever lived. Can you imagine someone live a life whose life is not right with God, but right at the death, right at the last moment of his life, he was forgiven by our Lord Jesus. Okay, have you ever happened this to you? Um, you did something wrong and you thought going to face, so, uh, you make a very serious offense, you thought going to be punished, face the consequences, but in the end, you are simply just let 
off and forgiven. Okay, I remember, I remember uh, such, there was one such incident I remember vividly. Okay, when I was serving in the NS many years ago, okay, um, part of my duties as a soldier okay, is to uh, involve in parades like this, you see on the slides. All right, when foreign delegates come and uh, we will, we will uh, perform a parade just to welcome them. Okay, okay I remember uh, this particular uh, uh, parade when uh, I was involved, uh, we are rostered and I was involved. So, um, um, as usual, we need to book in the night before. Uh, and early in the morning, 5.30, we got to wake up, draw our arms, our rifle, our bayonet, and after that, clean up the rifle, clean up the bayonet, go for breakfast at 6 a.m. Uh, after that, we go back to our units, our individual units, and we dress up to our, our smart, our iconic, the iconic number one navy all white uniform, ready for the parade. So I did uh, what was the, the routine that day. The, the routine is the same. I went, I went in the morning, draw arms, have my breakfast, dress up, and uh, after that, I went to the designated, we are told to meet up at a designated spot whereby we will, there will be a transport to bring us to the parade where the, it's actually an, usually another camp. So, uh, so uh, I did what was told as, 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 as a, this was a normal routine. So I went to the, the, the spots where the transport is going to pick us up. And I went there, something very unusual happened. Not a single soul. I did not see uh, any of my comrades. So I waited, I waited, and uh, minute by minute, I waited, I don't see any of my fellow soldiers. So I started to get panic, panic. And uh, it dawned on me that the bus has left. And uh, to my horror, yeah, I panicked, I was very scared. And uh, I, know the, I know deep down I was in trouble. So in my panic, I ran, I ran to, the, to the entrance of the camp. I thought of taking a cab taking a cap to, to the other camp. Then I realized um, I was holding my rifle and my bayonet. How am I going to leave, go into the, the public space? The police will come after me. So that morning, I knew that I was in trouble. Uh, I knew I was, in, uh, I was done. Um, so I returned my arms, and uh, I go back to my units, and uh, I'll wait for the uh, consequences. Um, I, I, I spoke to my uh, fellow uh, colleagues who was not involved, and everyone said, Ronnie, you are in deep trouble. I was very scared the whole morning. And I um, was praying for the, for, the, for the best, okay. And um, later that day in the afternoon, the contingent came back. The contingent came back. And I reported quickly to the parade commander, a very senior guy. And I told, sir, I'm very sorry. I think I missed the bus. I think I heard wrongly. And guess what? My officer, who is a senior guy, says, it's okay, Ronnie. Um, I, a I actually activated the reserve to replace you. It's okay. Go back. Go back to your unit and, and carry on your work. So when I heard that, I was so relieved. I was so relieved. I thought I thought to save face the consequences. Yet, I was let off. Okay. Jesus was without sin. He did nothing wrong. Yet, he chose to go to the cross. And even as his final moments, he showed, he showed mercy and forgiveness to a criminal. This morning, as we remember and reflect the cross, let's remember that Jesus died, suffered, so that today, you and I can have a relationship with him. Let us pray for the bread and the wine. Dear Father, Thank you so much for Jesus who went to the cross about 2,000 years ago. Because of the sacrifice that Jesus has made, we are able to celebrate this new found relationship with him. Thank you for laying down your life for us. And through his blood, today we have a new hope, new life, and new destiny with you, Father. Thank you for helping us to continue to live a life worthy of a calling. We pray that you help us to always remain in you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Right now, there will be an instrumental piece that will be played. Let's reflect on the cross.
mic first. Okay. Hi, brothers and sisters. So, um, hope it's a great communion time of reflection. Right now, we are really blessed to have a live stream sermon by Sean Wooten. Amen. So, before we have that, we're going to be singing a, a new song called Living Hope. Um, I think, honestly, in life, sometimes we go through really difficult moments, times where we, we have failed, we get really discouraged, um, moments of despair. But I hope that uh, through this song, as you reflect on the lyrics, we'll learn that Jesus Christ, He is the living hope, the hope above all hope that we can get in life. Amen.
today. Um, my name is Sean Wooten, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I really wish I could be there in person with you right now. Um, it has to be one of my favorite places on this planet, um, being able to be in Singapore. And the most amazing part of Singapore is you, the church, God's church. Um, and uh, just me and Lena want to say hello. And um, I, by the way, I introduce myself. My my name is Sean and my wife, Lena. Um, I was converted in Kansas um, about 30 years ago. Uh, my wife was converted in Moscow uh, 29 years ago. And 28 years ago, I became a missionary. Uh, God uh, introduced me to my future wife. And uh, we've been on the mission field now for 30 years uh, in the former Soviet Union in Eastern Europe. Um, but if you don't know me, um, for many years, me and my family had the humongous privilege of being able to visit the Singapore church every year. Uh, COVID has hampered um, our ability to come and travel. Um, but as soon as all of this gets figured out, uh, we can't wait to come see all of you. Um, but we're sending our hugs and our love uh, to all of you uh, in the picture as well. You uh, saw Andrew, my son, uh, who actually went to school in Singapore. Um, and my daughter, Diana, who's in her second year of university here in Kiev, um, just finishing her last exam. So she's very excited. Um, I'm right now in Kiev. I just came up to see my daughter. Um, and uh, we'll be heading back to Odessa, um, where I've been the last 10 months. And I'll share more about that in a little bit. Uh, but it is great to be with you this morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation to speak, to share. Um, and of course, through video like this, it's not as much fun as being with you uh, because I found the Singapore Church to be one of the most encouraging fellowships um, I've ever been to. I would always leave Singapore with this bag full of letters and notes um, of all the love and affection and appreciation you always show um, for the saints around the world. Um, so we love you dearly. Um, but let's jump into our little lesson for today. Uh, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we'll start here in verse 1. Um, it says, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God in our brother Sosthenes. Um, you would think English was my first language, but I'm not sure if I have a first language anymore. Um, but here uh, we see God, it's God's will. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Paul was convinced that he was in God's kingdom because of God's will. Um, that's the first thing I want us just to, to, to welcome each other this morning. It is not an accident that you are watching this video right now. And it is not an accident that you've become a part of God's kingdom or you're seeking God. Uh, God created you with this dream of you being a part of his family. Um, you're not here because of your parents. You're not here because of your friends. Uh, you're not here because of a situation. You're here because God's will for you to be here. God's will is for you to be with him, to be in a right relationship with him, to spend eternity with him uh, in heaven. Now, it also says here, and our brother Sosthenes. Um, I'm so-so with the whole theological deep background, but Sosthenes, I just don't know who he is exactly or what exactly he did. But I do know he was with Paul. And I do know that Paul, while he's writing this letter, is referencing him. And I think this also, just before we get started, I just had to point this out. Um, we can't do Christianity alone. Um, none of us can do Christianity alone. Maybe, maybe we don't know who Sustenus is, but to Paul, he was a brother. He was a, a valuable relationship. Every relationship in the kingdom is so valuable. Um, we all need one another. We all need encouragement. We all need to stick together. We can't do this alone. Um, and I love that Paul, he immediately references who's sitting by his side and helping him to pin this difficult letter to the Corinthians. 
Um, so I don't know who Sosthenes is, but we will get to meet one day. I'm praying. Amen. Um, so to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, several things jump out at me here as they may you as well. It says here, sanctified in Christ Jesus. Okay, sanctified. Let's camp out here just for one second. Now in the Old Testament, um, somebody might have a bowl or a sword or a pole or, or, or something and it could not be used in the temple. It could not be used by God until it was sanctified. So this normal looking bowl uh, would be dipped in blood, it would be cleansed, it would go through a ritual, and only then could it be used uh, by God. Only then could it be used in the presence of God, in the temple of God. It's unbelievable that me and you have been sanctified. Uh, same thing happened with us. We, we've we been cleansed in blood. Uh, there's been sacrifice for us. And because of that, we can be set aside and put into the presence of God. Uh, we can be put into the temple to be used by God. It's an instrument now that can be in his presence and used by him for service for him. And it's unbelievable that God sanctified me and you, that, that he took us out of the world, cleansed us, and he has something very special he wants to use me and you to do in this life, in this world, um, because we've been sanctified and we can be used by him. Now, um, I don't know what you saw in the mirror this morning. When I looked in the mirror this morning, I didn't see anything that looked special or looked sanctified or looked set aside for God. Um, it, it looked like just me. And um, in the morning, my what's left of my hair is pointing in different directions. And I need to brush my teeth and all kinds of... It's vi When I look at me, the flesh still looks like the same old flesh. But what God's done to us, what he's... What he's done in you and with you is, is almost impossible to comprehend that we've been dipped in the blood. And in the Old Testament, maybe it was goat's blood or heifer blood or some kind of blood, but not me and you. We weren't dipped in goat's blood. We were dipped in the blood of the Son of God. We have been cleansed by the Son of God. His blood is what sanctified uh, me and you. You are not just a new human. You're a new creation. Um, that creation which is you did not exist um, before Christ died on the cross and you were baptized into Christ, thus becoming a new creation. Um, if we were in the Old Testament, we couldn't even approach the Holy Spirit. Uh, we'd have to go through an incredible ritual and be the high priest to even come into his presence. Um, we've been so sanctified that God can actually live inside of me and you. Um, we've been so changed and so purified, and we've become a new creation that can live in the presence of God, which is phenomenal. I, I, if, I pray that this morning you're in awe at the very fact that you can call yourself a Christian. It is, it's an impossible feat what God has done with me and you. So it says here, so, so be holy. And that's why we, we come out of this world because even though in the mirror we look like everybody else in this world, when we read the scriptures and we understand the scriptures, we realize we are nothing like this world. There is nothing about you that's like this world, what God has done to you. Um, we have to come out of the way the world thinks. I, I don't know what world, what world you're living in right now um, in Singapore. I, I love Singapore. It has to be probably my favorite country. Um, but over here in my world, uh, there's all kinds of rumors of war. There's corruption. There's incredible criticism towards any kind of authority. Um, there's tearing down. Uh, there's hatred between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, there's hatred between, um, depending on your passport or your skin color or, or your nationality or what language you speak. That This world is, is starving to rip everybody apart and blame everybody for everybody's problems. But me and you, we've been sanctified by Jesus Christ. So we, we come out of this world. We are holy. We are set apart for service in his temple, not in this world. Um, the world is not, it's not our passion. It's not our love. It's, it's not what we set our gauges at. It's not our standard. 
Um, I actually feel very blessed because now in the Ukraine, all the news channels are in Ukrainian. Um, so I don't understand what's going on around the world. I live in this happy little place surrounded by disciples, and luckily I don't understand what's going on. Um, I wish you the same, uh, that we do not love anything in this world, but that we embrace God's kingdom because of his sanctification. Amen? Now it says here, um, Church of God. Um, now, if you know the letter of 1 Corinthians, Paul's about to go through a really challenging letter because the church wasn't doing awesome. Um, there was all kinds of unity issues. There's all kinds of craziness going on, uh, a lack of, of holiness, a lack of spirituality. So lots of things going on. Now, how does Paul address the church in Corinth? He says, to the church of God in Corinth. Now, it's God's church. <laughs> and as in, as in, in, as in perfect as I am, it's still God's church. Uh, that, that there's, there, there's problems, there's challenges, there's always problems and challenges, but we have to always embrace the fact that this is God's church. And it says here, the church of God, and in the next few verses, there's 14 times Paul uses the word Jesus. And the focus of God's church is not people, it's Jesus. So we have to fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. He's who started your faith, and he's who's going to finish your faith. It's Jesus. So we fix our eyes on Jesus. Our focus is on Jesus. But we have to be very careful how we view, how we view the bride of Christ. This is the bride of Christ. This is the church of God. Church of God in Corinth. Those small letters in Corinth. Church of God. Um, me and you, we're a part of God's church in the Ukraine, in Singapore, in Indonesia, in America. It, those are all small letters. God is so much bigger. God is so powerful and almighty and sovereign. God is always working in his family. Um, let's continue to read here. Um, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you've been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. I'm personally filled with thanks because of the grace of your testimony, your story. Um, you know, I, I know when you when you when you live in it, you don't notice it as much, but I just wanted to extend a personal gratitude to John and Karen, to all of you, to, to the staff, to all of my friends um in singapore uh when we first started coming to singapore i i wasn't in a great place spiritually um and i really needed the encouragement i really needed the faith um and i had just started leading the kiev church again which is about a thousand eight hundred members and i really needed help um and how to do that and i was so thankful uh, for all the help we got from john and karen for the example of the singapore church we stole everything from you from small groups to to good enough parenting to i choose us to to all the wisdom and the heart and the passion um, that all of you put into the ministry you're just your example of gratitude and your heart and desire to grow uh, just so thankful uh for your guys example it is a testimony um i always thank god for all of you uh, because of the grace and it is grace it's God's gift to you. you. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. It's just God's grace. He just blessed you with an amazing fellowship. Um, so I pray you woke up this morning with some gratitude in your heart for the amazing fellowship you get to be a part of. I don't know the COVID situation, whether you've actually seen each other in a year and a half, but trust me, you guys are awesome. And praise God for all the gifts he's brought since day one of that amazing story, the Singapore church till today. And may God continue to bless um, uh, the generations to come there. Um, but it says here, he's enriched us in every way with speech and knowledge, uh, confirming Christ among us. You know, I'm grateful that God reached out to me. I'm grateful for the grace I received, that it's been more than 30 years that I was an atheist headed for Wall Street no interest in God at all. And within three or four months, I'm dreaming to go on a mission team to the former Soviet Union to serve God. Like, 
how does that happen? What is that? Uh, that's sanctification. That's, that's when I understood, oh my gosh, I get to go to heaven now. Um, I was on the absolute highway to hell. And because of God's grace, because of his gift, um, I now have the opportunity to go to heaven. You know, it's amazing that each one of us even get to know God's word and hear God's word and accept God's word. That God opened my prideful heart towards his word is a stunning miracle um, that I value still today. Um, sometimes we don't always... Sorry about that. It says my battery was about to... Let me plug in here real quick. And if I'm preaching too long, maybe the battery should die. So here we go. Um, let's keep reading. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so it says here, you do not lack any spiritual gift. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm lacking something. Like, oh, if I just had this, I would be doing so much better. Oh, if I could come visit you guys in Singapore and spend a week there with you guys, oh, that would really help. I would be, it would be so much better if I could do that. Or, man, if COVID would finish, then we could really get going and I could really start to be a fired up disciple. Or, oh, when I finish college, then I'm going to, oh, once I get a job, then I'm going to, oh, once I get married, then I'm, oh, and once I have kids, oh, and once I have grandkids, oh, and sometimes we're always waiting for something else to happen, or we're waiting for somebody to bring us something, um, because we think because of these things, my spirituality is being impacted. Well, I have good news for us today. That is not true. <laughs> Your spirituality today is absolutely 100% available to be at its 100% highest peak level it's ever been. There is no circumstance there is no situation that goes beyond our ability to be spiritual and to have an incredible walk with God and to have an amazing impact on this planet. There is no time that's better than today. And tomorrow, there'll be more, no better time than tomorrow. Um, God has given us everything we need to be spiritual and to be strong with him. Um, but it says here, we eagerly await the Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Uh, like That's like a revelate, like something new about Jesus. It's been 30 years now. I've been having quiet times. And I don't know if you guys have watched The Chosen. I love The Chosen. But I love insights about who Jesus is. I love it when something comes alive in the scripture or I hear a sermon that I think, wow, Jesus, Jesus is amazing. Um... There's a scene in Chosen, if you, if you haven't seen it, I recommend it. But in season two, at the end of the first episode, um, Jesus is standing with John about to pick out a scroll to read from. And he says, John, which one should I read from? And um, he says, well, I like the creation story. And Jesus said, yeah, those are, those are fond memories. I mean, do we realize who we follow? I mean, Jesus is amazing. Um, that's who we want to be like. Um, we all want to be more and more like Jesus. That's the goal, uh, to be more like him, fix our eyes on him, right? Imitate him, clothe ourselves in him so that you don't see me, but you see him. Um, let's all keep trying to be as much like Jesus as we can. And, you know, usually you know what to do when you ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Anytime you're having some kind of a thought that you think, oh, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing, or what if I'm thinking the right thing? I wonder if I have the right attitude. All you have to say is, well, what would Jesus do in my shoes? And I'm telling you, it's so simple. It's always simple. Love God first. Put others ahead of you. Agape, love others more than yourself. And God always opens up the path to follow him and be more like him. You know, um, what are the things he's given us to be strong? He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the scriptures, prayer, each other, the church. Um, the fellowship. He's given us so many things to develop our spirituality. Um, you know, when I think about uh, prayer in God's word, uh, I think of two different trees. Um, lately, I've been thinking about these two different trees. One of them is a fig tree. Now, a fig tree grows to be about eight meters and its roots go down like eight meters, um, but it produces a ton of fruit. I mean, a ton of fig trees are very, very fruitful. Um, 
So there's the fig tree, right? You, 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 go, you go deep in the roots, deep roots. The roots are actually deeper than the tree is tall. Uh, but that produces an incredible amount of fruit. And I think that's, that's me and you, right? We want to go deeper in our walk with God, deeper in our understanding of who Jesus is. So we want to be like the fig tree. So if you feel like you're not producing fruit, and I'm not talking just about people, but just fruit of the Spirit, just a happiness, a joy, a peace, a forgiveness. If you're lacking some of these fruits, I want to suggest that you go deeper in your walk with God. Go deeper in the Scripture. Uh, not just reading about it, but really calling your heart to follow it and, and accept it for what it is. Uh, but then there's another tree that I've been uh, fascinated with lately. It's the um, redwood trees, which are in California. I haven't personally seen them, but I would like to one day. Now, these trees, they can grow to be like 100 meters tall, like 300 feet tall. That's tall. Um, they also live to be about 1,000, 2,000 years, something like that, some crazy amount of time. And their trunks are so wide that there's actually places where there's tunnels through the trunk, uh, which is, I mean, we're talking huge tree. Um, so imagine if the fig tree is like, I don't know, 12 meters tall and 20 meter deep roots. Um, how deep do you think the roots are of the, of the redwood trees to hold them up when they stand 100 meters tall? Um, well, you'll be amazed to know that the, the roots of the redwood trees go about six feet deep about one and a half meters deep to hold up a tree of 100 meters tall. Now, you're Googling this right now because you think I'm probably not telling the truth, but don't Google, wait till my sermon's over, then Google. Um, but the reason redwoods stand up is their roots don't go down, they go horizontal. And what they do is they grab onto the roots of the other redwood trees. See, the redwood trees grow as a family. And what they do is their roots go sideways and they lock onto each other. So when the storms come and the winds come, they could knock over these 100 meter trees. What holds them up is each other. And I think these two trees perfectly illustrate our world. Uh, not perfectly, of course, but they, they, it's a good illustration of, of our world because there's two things we're constantly growing in. Number one, we want to go deeper with our walk with God. And at the same time, we go deeper in our relationships with one another. We have to hold on to one another. You cannot let go of each other. You cannot break these bonds. You cannot allow each other to fall or sway or be isolated. We've got to hold on and love one another. And that's why Jesus set the ultimate example of forgiveness. Uh, he died on a cross to forgive our sins when we weren't even looking for it or even asking for it or even understood it. Um, and he totally forgave us. And if there's anything Jesus did for us, forgiveness was the most valuable gift because without it, we can't even approach him. We cannot approach God. So when he calls us to be his disciples, the one thing that's non-negotiable, and you'll find this in the New Testament, it's the only place where Jesus says, I'm not going to forgive you, is if we hold back any level of forgiveness for each other. It's never, ever acceptable for somebody who follows Jesus to not forgive somebody else. It just, it just doesn't work. So let's Go deeper in our walk with God and at the same time grab a hold of each other because the storms will come. They're going to come always, but that's to strengthen us. It's not to discourage us or disillusion us or cause us to lose our, our faith or, or idealism. It's to strengthen us. Uh, when the wind comes, that actually strengthens the roots. So grab a hold of each other, go deeper with God, and let God continue to grow our faith and our convictions. And I'll finish here. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is faithful. Oh, I wish I could say that about me. But I, I can't. Um, I can sometimes be late. I can sometimes be too early. I can forget. I can say I'll do A and I do B. I wanted to do C, but I ended up doing D. Um, can you count on Sean? Uh, well, I hope uh, most of the time, uh, kinda, um, even the brother who requested this video, he's probably getting nervous. Did Sean forget to do uh, the sermon? No, I didn't. Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> um, but I'm not always there. I'm not always, I'm not always present. I'm not always doing the right thing. I, I, I mix up priorities. I mess up. I hurt people's feelings. I do things wrong. But God is faithful. God is never late. God is never early. God is always on time. 
God never holds back and he never overwhelms. God is totally there for you exactly the way you need him to be there for you. And I just want to encourage you to have faith that God is totally working in your life right now. Love Jesus, follow Jesus, imitate Jesus' thoughts and actions, and God will unify us and strengthen us um, as we continue to build our relationship with him. Um, and it says here, um, you who are called, which means like summoned, uh, and we have been summoned by the creator of the universe. So um, that's definitely not a position of confidence, but a position of uh, on my knees. I'm being summoned by the king of the universe. And it says here, that he's called, he summoned me into fellowship with his son. Now, this is the last thing I really wanted to say. Um, when we say at church, at least in, in my world, when we say, oh, okay, we're going to take a 10-minute fellowship break. Now, what I hear is we get up and we go talk to someone for 10 minutes or talk to a couple of people, give a few hugs, and then sit back down. And that's our fellowship break. Uh, but the word fellowship is actually much, much richer than that. Um, it Fellowship means like a, a complete, unified, one investing heart into one something. Like it's, we're fellows. We're like, it's like if we were in business, we put in 50, we both put in half. Um, if it's a picnic, we all brought the same amount of food. Like we're, we're totally behind the idea and none of us hold back. There's not some people who kind of sit off and watch and then there's some who really put it in and, and, and that's not fellowship. Fellowship means an exact, proportional, combined, unified, all in, together. Whatever we decide all in is, we're all in together, equally. Now, we've been called into fellowship, not just with each other, where we could compare who's kind of better and who's worse. Oh, I'm better than he is. Oh, he's better than I am. Oh, no, what's right? No, it's not fellowship. With, it doesn't talk about we're called into fellowship with each other. It says here, we're called into fellowship with his son. So we're sitting at the table with Jesus. And what Jesus puts into the table, that's what we're willing to put in. We've been called into that fellowship. So if Jesus is willing to leave his home from heaven, come down to earth, if Jesus is willing to sacrifice his life, if Jesus is willing to forgive every, if Jesus is that patient with me, if Jesus is that kind to me, if Jesus is that loving, then I'm all in like he's in. Now, obviously, I fall way behind Jesus' standard in all those areas, but that's what we all strive for. That, that's what we want. We're all in this together. There is no active and non-active. There's no watching and those who are playing. We are all equal in the fellowship, whether you're a newly baptized teen or you're a senior member of the church who's 50 years in Christ, we're all equal called into the fellowship. And you know what? I love that. I would hate the idea of the greatest thing in my life, that having a relationship with God would be a spectator sport. Could you imagine church just being like a movie theater where you just come in for two hours, watch something and go home? Are you serious? The greatest thing that ever happened in our lives, God called us, we're sanctified, and now we just sit in a chair and watch somebody do that? No way. We're, we're called into a fellowship. We're, we're on stage. You're in the movie. Um, you're one of the stars. You're one of the chosen ones. You're, you're a new creation. You, you've been gifted and empowered. You know, I have to confess that I really like the Avenger movies. I know I have to grow up one of these days, but I'm not quite sure it's going to happen. Uh, there's, I have a few years left, but I'm not planning on it. I love the Avenger movies. Um, they fire me up. Why? Because these guys have these incredible gifts and they use them to help other people. And it's just so cool that they have these amazing gifts that the, the average person doesn't have any gifts like they they have these special gifts and then there are those evil villains who use their gifts for harm uh, but but the Avengers they use their gifts for good they protect they save lives they 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 heal they they do incredible things to to, to help everybody uh, survive live survive I don't know whatever the situation is the planet's blowing up or whatever but th they're using their gifts for good. And you know what? I think that's the perfect picture of the Singapore church. The Singapore church is a group of Avengers. Forgive me for saying that, but disciples have gifts. Read the New Testament. You've been blessed with so many blessings in Christ. You have gifts. You have the Holy Spirit. You, you have the word of God. You, you understand uh, heaven and hell. You understand eternity. You have one another. You have people on your team supporting you. 
Um, we have so many gifts and we need to use these for the good of the nation of Singapore. Use these in the sea region. Use these around the world. Use your gifts for good. Use your energy for good. Use your energy to save people who are literally hours possibly away from eternity and hell. Use your energy in that direction. Use your spirituality. Go deep with Jesus. Grab a hold of each other and let's go save people. Let's go help people have a chance to, to, to live for eternity with Christ and be reunited with their Father in heaven. This is what we've been called to. This is what we have fellowship with Jesus for. So that is it for the lesson. Um, love you guys so much and uh, pray for us. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but we're on this adventure called Revive. Um, we got a team of 20 people from all around the world, uh, mostly from the States, to quit their jobs, raise their own money, and move. Uh, it ended up being Odessa. We were supposed to go to Budapest, but the doors didn't open. They've been in Odessa now for 10 months just serving, paying for themselves, and now they're about to go home without a job, um, without any particular thing, but they made that sacrifice because they wanted God to use them to help change a country. Here's a picture of the team. They're unbelievable. Um, we've seen thousands of people get invited, hundreds of people studying the Bible. We have some amazing young Christians um, that have come out and become Christians because of the team. Um, it's been incredibly inspiring to watch how God's using this team. And right now we're ramping up for Revive 2.0, uh, where we plan on going to Zagreb, Croatia. Please pray that the doors open. Uh, me and my wife now for uh, almost 12 months have been living out of a couple suitcases. And we will continue this journey prayerfully if it's God's will for the next 10 years where we want to go to eight or nine different countries over the next 10 years and see if we can help revive them with these incredible teams of young people and also empty nesters people who just said I'll take a year and go help a country in eastern Europe get turned around uh, spiritually for eternity and right now we have eight countries in eastern Europe without even a church right now um, so we are praying for God to put together these teams uh, the good news is Revive 2.0. Um, it's a team right now of 35 people. We got 35 people signed up to come with us to Zagreb. The church is 38, so we're going to double the church when we land. So pray for us to be fruitful. Pray for us to have an impact. Uh, pray for the empty nesters to have a great impact on the older Christians in the church. Uh, and basically, in most of these churches, between 18 and 35, we don't have any Christians at all. So we're bringing over these big groups of 18 to 35 where we pray we can reinvigorate, recreate these group of young people that can stay behind and help the church to develop all generations um, as it continues to reach out uh, in the country. So thank you for the invitation. Hopefully I didn't go too long. Um, I went longer than I wanted to go, but um, I do love all of you and thank you for listening to God's word this morning. Prayerfully you'll be encouraged. You can find me on Sean's Borsch. Uh, drop me a note if something encouraged you. I always love to hear from all of you. Uh, you guys are my dear, dear friends and family. And uh, when Singapore will let in an American and a Russian, um, we're going to be coming as soon as we possibly can. So love you. Uh, have a great Sunday. And uh, hopefully I'll get to see you soon. Bye-bye. Good morning, brothers and sisters. What an amazing sermon. It's like a buffet, you know, so many points to take back. And uh, I just feel so challenged to do a, a, a response for Sean's sermon. But I think I thank God for YouTube. You can always go back and watch YouTube and, and uh, reflect upon the many things that you have said. So over here, what really impacted me, I think, I want to just thank Sean for reminding us how amazing God is, that how much He has done for us to sanctify us with His Son, bring us into the kingdom, make us holy and even able to approach God himself. You know, and thank you for telling us that we do not lack any spiritual gift. We do not need to wait for any special circumstances to use our gifts. We can start where we are, as adventurers in the Singapore church. I love the tree analogy, you know, on how we can be fruitful by growing deep roots, by digging deep into our Bible studies, as we also extend our roots to each other, connecting closely to each other to be united so that we can overcome the challenges together that comes along our way. All this just reminded me of the spiritual disciplines that we are learning now 
to go deeper and to, for our roots to go wide to be like Jesus. Thank you, Sean, for reminding us that God is always faithful. That He's totally reliable, trustworthy, and He can definitely work through our imperfection. We are also called into a fellowship with Jesus Christ, not as a spectator, but as a disciple, to give fully to this fellowship. I miss greatly the face-to-face -face fellowship, but I'll try my very best to find ways to connect deeper and more fellowship in church. I'm inspired by the brothers and sisters who took up the calling to live their lives to go into the missionary in Eastern Europe. With all these things going on around the world, they are not thinking about themselves, but have, they are thinking about the love of God, they have this love, and they want to just reach out to the people and help them to know God. Now, let us now, uh, let us now pray. Um, Father, we thank you so much for speaking through Sean to inspire, to encourage, to spur us in our walk with you. You save us by your amazing grace through your Son, Jesus Christ, and that now we can approach you with full confidence, knowing that you hear us and will help us in our times of need. Thank you so much for making us holy and help us to continue to be holy so that we can see you working in us and through us even more. Father, thank you so much for giving us the church so they can love, can help, serve, and support each other in good and bad times. Although we can't meet face to face now in large groups, help us to think and work out ways so that we can still give ourselves fully to the fellowship with one another in Jesus Christ. Father, we pray and give thanks all this in Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are now going to take up a collection for the poor. In Singapore, I'm grateful that we are in a position to give than to receive. I count this giving as a blessing. As we take time to remember the poor and give freely to them, may we also realize the blessings that God has bestowed on us. A chart will be shown behind me uh, or on the screen, the breakdown of our donation, followed by a QR code for the collection. Please check the UEN number after scanning the QR code before you donate. Thank you for your generous giving. Now is the time for announcements. We have three announcements today. For the first one, just a gentle reminder that the nominations for the management committee ends tonight before 2359. Please inform your leaders if you would like to nominate someone. Announcement two, please also note that our AGM will be taking place on the 27th June at 1.30pm and it will be conducted virtually like last year. We will be sending the information about the AGM on 13th uh, 13 June via email. For this reason, we have sent out an email earlier on the 9th of May to verify the email address that you have with us. Please check that you have received an email from a church with the subject Central Christian Church Annual General Meeting 2021 email address update. Please click and open the mail. If you cannot find it in your inbox, please try to search for it in a spam or junk folder. This will help us greatly with the verification process. If you need to update your address, please drop a mail to the following email address on, shown on screen. Finally, 
If you would like to join us for any group discussion, please scan the QR code shown on the screen and key in your details. We will contact you shortly. Church, we have come to the end of the service today. Please take care and God bless.